Hello and welcome to First Look, I'm Young John. Today I'm really excited to take a look at Rockat's Vulcan 121 Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. So let's open up the box and see what they give you. This is the unboxing of the Rocat Vulcan 121. The front of the box shows you the kind of switch it has. This is the Titan Switch Linear, which is the red one. And this is the back of the box. We have the wrist rest, the keyboard, a quick install guide, and behind it, a couple of stickers, which is awesome. Look at that. And that's what comes in the box. You get your keyboard, your detachable wrist rest, and your paperwork. So let's look at this beautiful keyboard. I mean, the design is like industrial. It's very goth-like almost. It's in your face. I love the way they have these two little screws up here on the top here and then the bottom cutouts there. It's just kind of raw, but pretty at the same time. It's like a, uh, when you're shooting a fashion photo shoot, but you're doing it in some industrial wasteland, but it looks really cool at the same time. It's made out of anodized aluminum and gives it a nice rigidity to it. Even though it looks heavy, it's not. It's made mostly of plastic, so if you look underneath at the bottom, it has really nice rubber feet. It grips to the bottom and it doesn't move. So you can see a nice strip of rubber going all the way across on the bottom and also on the top here, here, and on the feet, and also on the feet when you raise the foot. The cable is connected directly into the keyboard and it's made out of a woven cloth, which is very, very strong and it's got a length of 1.8 meters, which is like six feet long. So this is really, it's taller than I am. <laughs> and it comes with a Velcro strap so you can wind up any excess slack. The 120 series keyboards all come with a wrist rest. Uh, this one's the 121, which is black, and it comes with this. Uh, basically, it attaches via magnets. So if you look underneath it, it also has a very good long rubber strip. Two of them, actually. One here and one there. And it's magnetized. So basically, you just snap it on, and it's already connected. Let's plug this guy in and show you exactly what it can do. Now, there's no documentation online or in the box about what all of this stuff does. So it takes a bit of a trial and error to figure it all out. But uh, let me show you the basics of everything. I love the media keys, okay? I like this kind of DJ type knob right up here. You twist it left and twist it up for audio controls. And that's what this button here is for. And this effects button controls the lighting system. So you turn it left to turn it off. You turn it right to turn the lights brighter. This is volume off. The other media keys are accessed by holding the function key and then tapping whatever F key you want to access. Multimedia controls are F9 to F12. So you can play your video or music. Control the volume with your knob. And when you're finished, stop it. F5 to 8 controls your website browser, your email, and your calculator. And the F1 to 4 controls selection of your profiles when it comes to the lighting on your keyboard. There are four indicators on the bottom right-hand corner, and that's for number lock, your caps lock, scroll lock, and for your game mode. Let's talk about the keys. The switches I'm using here are developed in-house by Rocat. They're called Titan switches. And this keyboard has linear reds. Now they're akin to Cherry MX reds, but the distance to actuation is 1.4 millimeters, making it really short. Now, gaming keyboards in general are great for gaming, but they're not so good for typing. Tactile feedback isn't there when you're talking about linear keys. Weirdly, I'm typing more accurately than on other gaming keyboards. And I love the feel of these things. I mean, they're really tight and they're precise. Now, the thing about this is they developed it with a transparent housing so you can see more of the lights. They also have keys that have really short skirts. So if you look sideways, the keycaps here are extremely thin. If I take one of these keys and compare that to a regular skirted key. If you turn it sideways, this is skirtless. There's very little skirt there, and that illuminates the light a lot more. Plus, it's a lot lighter, so it moves faster. Well, that's the claim anyway. But uh, I do have to say that 
it's a lot less wobbly than typing on this key. Now, if you look underneath, they both use the cross-type Cherry MX stems, so they are kind of compatible with each other. You can probably take third-party Cherry keys and adapt them to use it on this keyboard, but I don't know why you'd want to, because if I take this key and I stick it into the Rollcat keyboard, it feels wobbly for some reason. It doesn't go down as firmly. It doesn't feel firm at all. I don't know why, but I put the regular key back, the skirtless one. And the feeling is again firm. They also have keys that are dipped so it fits your fingers. So combining the transparent housing and the skirtless keys, there's a lot of light that emanates from them. There's an interesting thing about the bottom row of keys. They're sloped downwards. Now that's a big problem on other keyboards that are not sloped down. I'll give you an example. I use the left alt key a lot when I do video editing. So over time, it catches so often, I use it so often, that it gets loose on the stem and it pops out. I've had to replace that one key, which is really annoying. I don't want to replace one key, but having this slope ensures that my finger doesn't catch on the edge of the key, making that stem looser and looser. It'll add to the longevity of these keys. When it comes to gaming, this keyboard checks all of the boxes. It's got NK rollover, it's got anti-ghosting, it's got polling rate of a thousand hertz. It's even got a nib on the W key. So typically movement is WASD, right? So you don't have to look at the key and go, okay, where's the W? No, you can just put your finger there and you already know that W is where it should be. Now this keyboard is uber customizable with macros. Now there's a game mode function that enables all of that. So game mode is function and scroll lock and you'll see this little light go on, and that will enable uh, six of the macro keys that are on here. Plus, it also enables easy shift technology, which is basically macros for the whole left side of the keyboard. Now you access them by pressing the caps lock and then any of these keys, which you set in their Swarm software. So you're not just limited to the six macro keys on the right side, your whole left hand can access other macro keys too. The lighting and the illumination is one of the top features of the Vulcan 121 keyboard. As I said before, the switch housing is made transparent. That's how it was designed to let the lights like be super bright. If I angle the keyboard just a little bit, you can see how bright this keyboard really is. I mean, this is super crazy. And all of this is customizable using the Swarm software. So here we are in Rocat Swarm Software, your one-stop shop for all of your peripheral settings. Uh, if you're not into setting customization lighting and uh, macro keys, don't even bother coming in here because this is way too complicated if you don't like doing that kind of thing. After you download and install Swarm, this is only for Windows uh, PCs, uh, you make sure that your peripheral is connected. This is connected. If it's not connected, you see this little uh, unplugged picture. So the Vulcan AMO has four different profile slots on the bottom here. Uh, but let me start here at profile one. I have it as muted white for work. Okay, I don't want my boss walking in and saying, what are you doing with all those colors on your, it's for a child, you know? But I'm gonna go and show how conservative and normal I can be <laughs> at the workplace because I love the feeling of this keyboard. I have four profiles here. They're mapped to the F1, 2, 3, and F4 keys up there. I can pick a different profile. Uh, let's say after hours, I'm gonna go to uh, my wave over here. But instead of going profile and apply, right? I can just hold function and F3 and it'll go directly into there. Or if I see my boss coming back, function and F1 will directly jump back into this profile very, very fast. What I'm gonna do is create a new profile slot and I'm going to make this a gaming slot, okay? I'm gonna call this one wild gaming. And you go into here and you can select from up here the different kinds of lighting. Now, most of this stuff is self-explanatory. If I go to heartbeat, it'll give you a preview of what it's gonna do. You can select the colors, you know, or go to custom and select different colors, uh, the brightness, speed, whatever. But the most interesting thing for you probably will be fully lit and custom mode. So in fully lit, it just brightens the whole keyboard. You can select the colors for that, custom colors or themes. But the most interesting one is the custom mode because I can control everything about all the keys. So this is wild gaming. 
I'm gonna do all the gaming keys, okay? WASD, and I also want uh, my, maybe my number keys, and then I want some other keys. So I'm gonna hold control on my keyboard here. It's like Windows, you know, you hold control to keep adding buttons. Here's my run button, control, my jump, and maybe my crouch button, I use an X instead of a C, and I wanna turn these red. So I'm gonna go to color theme, I'm just gonna choose red. Just for those that I selected, and I'm gonna go to apply, and then you can see that it's applied the red on just the keys that I wanted, which is amazing. Now, I wanna reload, but I don't want it to be red. You know, I forget to reload my guns. So I wanna go here, go to effect, and go to, say, breathing. And I wanna change this into a yellow breathing type of thing happening. And there's a preview, but you can't really see it until you go apply. And when you look at the keyboard, you'll see that the yellow R is breathing. So you never forget to kind of reload because it's always catching your eye. Uh, secondary buttons, I want my map. I'm gonna hold down control and also select I for inventory, H to hide the gun, you know, when I'm amongst friends. And then I'm going to select a different thing. I'm gonna select, oh, I don't know, um, heartbeat, a green, okay? And I want the speed to be super fast. I want it to be not too bright and I go apply and you'll see just those colors have been changed to MHI green. Isn't this great? <laughs> so maybe now I wanna go and change my F keys into like a pink. I can actually change it to a color gradient from pink to like a blue, something like that. And then when I go out and I click apply, the whole top row will change colors from pink to blue. Let's say I'm done with this profile and I really like it. So let's save it now. Going to export this profile and it's gonna save it as a RKP. Now the profile is saved. Let's say I'm done with this one here and I wanna get rid of it. Just click down here and delete profile. And yes, this profile disappears, but you did save it, right? So you go to profile manager and it's not here. You can always import the profile that you saved and it'll bring it right back in. You can bring it up here, and voila, there it is back again. Ta-da! So while Swarm can customize up the bazoo, one annoying thing is that these profiles are not saved inside these buttons when you exit Swarm, and suddenly it reverts back to the factory settings of whatever it came as in the factory. If you want your profiles again, you have to go back to Swarm, open it up, and then it kind of remembers the different keys you had. So Rocat, if you're listening, we would love to have these profiles that we worked really hard on saved inside these four keys. We don't want it to go back to factory. Thank you very much. So that's pretty much key illumination. Now let's say that I wanna do macros, key assignments. Uh, if you wanna see all of your key assignments, you go to list view and it shows you every single key and what macros or what settings there are. But if you know what all the keys do, you can go to keyboard view and select, let's say a W and it'll show you game mode function is W key and easy shift function is also a W. Let's say I wanna make a macro for easy shift W, which is your caps lock when you're gaming. Uh, I'll take that, I'll delete that and drag add new macro. I want to run with this one. So let's start recording. I'm going to run with a W shift to make it run and then I'll let both of those keys go and stop recording and that's it. I'll go okay and now this is a macro. My macro one. I don't want to call it my macro one. That's kind of stupid, right? <laughs> so I'm going to go into my macro manager down here and I see my macros. It's my macro one and then you can change it and call it uh, running. I'll go to OK, and the W is now running. Let's say I don't want to do that anymore. OK, I don't want, you know, let's just reset it to default. And I think that's a stupid macro. <laughs> I'm going to go to Macro Manager and select that and throw it in the trash. I'm, I don't need it. So good. That's how you do macros. So here's a demonstration of what AMO actually is. I have three different peripherals, one, two, and three, that works with AMO and Rocat Swarm kind of combines all the lighting together 
to work with all three in unison. But instead of going to each different profile and selecting AMO here and then going there to select AMO, you can do this on top, move to the right, click on the AMO button and activate it. And then you'll see all of these three different peripherals activating once I click apply. I always forget to do that, but don't forget to click apply or it won't happen. So now all of these are now synchronized together. So let's say I'm playing a game, everything is unified. So when I move around and I attack and I shoot things, you see all the colors changing. And even the headset changes color. If I go ahead, it kind of expands on that. And when I release it, it contracts back. So it's a really cool thing to see everything working as one. The only thing is the reaction is kind of slow. So if I'm shooting really fast or if I'm running, like this, then you can see the light kind of expanding out. But most key taps, if it's just short, you're only gonna see like small reactions. I think it's very cool to see different products unified like this. And that, my friends, is Swarm for the Vulcan 121 AMO. Rocat doesn't have replacement keys that you can buy. Being that it's specialty keys being really thin and skirtless, I'd like to be able to buy a set of new keys in case anything happened to the keys that I have here. When you exit Swarm, the profiles are forgotten and it reverts back to the default color settings. Maybe in a firmware update, it would be really nice if the keyboard remembered all the settings that I put into it. You can always download updates and firmware, but you're never able to choose exactly which ones you're able to update at all. So it downloads everything or nothing. If I'm on a metered bandwidth on the internet, uh, it'll be nice to see how much I'm actually downloading. So file sizes would be nice, and the ability to select which updates I want would also be nice. The Rocat Vulcan 121 has a lot going for it. I like the industrial design and the look of it. I like the feeling of it when I type. I think a lot, a lot of that has to do with the switch itself and how it was designed. I've never felt keys feel as firm and accurate as I do with these in both gaming and in productivity situations. The lighting is spectacularly bright given the transparent housing and the skirtless caps. And for people like me who don't like to futz around with customization, I'll leave it on AMO. And when I get more AMO products, it'll all integrate well together. Thank you very much for watching our look into the Rocat Vulcan 121 mechanical gaming keyboard with AMO lighting. Uh, this that's the mouthful to say. If you want to check out prices, we'll leave Amazon affiliate links down below in the notes. And if you haven't yet, please take a moment now to subscribe to the First Look YouTube channel. We shall see you all again next time. Switches and keys and keycaps. And... Let's do room tone. So the heater's on and the refrigerator is on right now. Okay.